your name. Your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of the feet. The resurrection King is resurrecting me. Hallelujah. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Stand up this morning. Hallelujah. The King of all glory is in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. The King is resurrecting me this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Resurrection power, 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 wonder working power. Hallelujah. Touch, healing, anointing to flow. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Resurrected King. Hallelujah. Resurrected King. Hallelujah. Resurrected King. Resurrected King. Glory to the Lord. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Touch. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll take your hand. Hallelujah. Lord says, Son, I'm with you. I'm with you, Son. I'm with you. I haven't forsaken you. I haven't rejected you. And I'm lifting you up out of the ashes of defeat even this day. Even the many things that have come around about you, all that discouragement and all that disappointment. I'm raising you up this day with my resurrection power and with my righteous right hand. I'm lifting you up out of all those things that you've been entangled in. The Lord says, this is the day of liberty. This is the day of freedom. This is the day of release. This is the day of breakthrough. Hallelujah for the resurrected King is resurrecting you this morning. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come up from among, out among, from among them and be separate and I will be your Father. I will be your father. I will be your Abba Daddy. I will be the one that you're seeking for. Hallelujah. And I will reveal myself in a new way. I will reveal myself. I will heal your heart. I'll heal your emotions. I will bring great deliverances to you that you never thought would have been possible. For I am the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, mighty, mighty God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I pray for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord says, Son, my hand is upon you. My hand is upon you. There's been many that have come, uh, rejected you. There's been many battles and challenges and opposition that you've gone through. But the Lord says, Son, this day I'm strengthening you. I'm strengthening you. I'm giving you that inner strength on the inside. Hallelujah. For I will fight for you, says God. There's been many that wanted to bulldoze you over. There's been many that wanted to just cast you aside. But the Lord says, Son, this is a day of resurrection power. This is a day when I'm rising with healing in my wings upon you, healing your emotions this morning. Touching you, says God, delivering you from the arrow that fly by day and the pestilence that stalks in the darkness. For I love you, son. I love you with an everlasting love. I am your comforter. I am your restorer. And I am the glory and the lifter of your head this day. The Lord says, son, I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And I will restore that the years that the locusts have eaten. I will restore the joy of your salvation. I will cause my reign of my presence to fall upon you and restore you. I am your comforter. I am your comforter, says the Lord. And I will not allow you to go through more than what you can handle. But I will make a way of escape. For I am with you to deliver you even this day. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you? Your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just see that you've been through a lot of turmoil. There's been a lot of things that have been going around you. It's like many times you feel like World War III's broken out against your emotions, against your mind. And the Lord says, Son, I'm touching you today. I'm lifting you up, even out of that tomb of defeat. I'm lifting you up, says God. I'm causing those Jericho walls to be flattened even this day for you. For I am the author and the finisher of your faith. Hallelujah. And you're going to see great things, great things, says God. For I'm enlarging the vision. And even as Jabez prayer, prayer was, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. The Lord says, son, I'm going to enlarge your territory. I'm going to bring finances in, says God. I'm going to restore the years that the locusts have eaten. I'm going to cause breakthrough. I'm going to cause you to walk in favour and blessings. For surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For God says, I'm doing a new thing today, son. I'm doing a new thing today, son. I'm resurrecting you, resurrecting you out of that defeat, 
out of that rejection. I'm resurrecting you. I'm rising with healing in my wings upon you this day. Hallelujah. The Lord says, son, I've put a bulldog nature inside of you. I've put a warrior spirit on the inside of you. There's been many that have looked at you and scorned and looked down upon you. But the Lord says, son, I've put a fighting spirit on the inside. Just like David of old, he trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. And the Lord says, son, I'm going to cause you to be one that's going to rise up and going to break through, going to break through out of the old, going to break through out of religiosity, going to break through into, into the new, for you're going to see my goodness in the land of the living. Hallelujah. This is a day to start dreaming again. Start dreaming big dreams, son. This is a new day. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you? Your name. Catherine. Hallelujah. Oh, Cora Barondo. Hallelujah. I'm just sensing there's so much creativity inside of you, Catherine. So much creativity. Father God, touch this beautiful woman. This beautiful woman. And I just see it's like on the inside. There's been there's been many things that that have caused you to be so broken on the inside. There's been a lot of disappointment, a lot of turmoil that's been swirling around about your life. There's been a lot of the grief that you've gone through. There's been a lot of heartache and pain that you've gone through. But the Lord says, daughter, I'm picking up the pieces of your life and I'm bringing you releases just in time. I'm even bringing healing in emotional areas, even in that deep rejection, even in that turmoil, that shock, shock and terror. I'm bringing you releases, says God. I'm delivering you. I'm setting you free, even from slavery. I'm setting you free, even from controlling powers this day, says God. I'm releasing you. I'm releasing. I'm breaking the bands and shackles of this every enslavery yoke in the name of Jesus. I'm your deliverer. I'm your healer. I am your restorer. The Lord says, I love you. I love you. And I just see like a beautiful flower that's been out <clears throat> growing in the wilderness, a beautiful flower. And many times it's like that beautiful flower was bruised. The petals were bruised. The Lord says, daughter, I'm pouring saved, healing balm even into your emotions today. I'm pouring healing balm even to bring healing, even to bring wholeness in areas of of, of torment, areas of loss. I'm bringing healing, says God. I'm wrapping my loving arms around about you for I am your comforter. I am your healer. I am the lover of your soul and I'm restoring. I'm restoring, says God, and I'm bringing you into a new season for there's a new season that is before you, a new season of restoration, a new season of joy, a new season of freedom and peace. And I just see you breaking out of prison bars, breaking out of prisons, breaking out of shackles that that have hemmed you in and kept you in. The Lord says, daughter, I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to put a new song in your mouth, a song of praise and worship even unto me, says God. I'm going to lift you up out of the pit for there's been many times the enemies wanted to keep you in the pit, but today I'm breaking the restraints of that pit, of that hold upon your life and I'm bringing you out with a new song, a new song of praise and worship, says God. This is a new day of victory. This is a day of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to the Lord. Praise you, Jesus, mighty, mighty God. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you? Hallelujah. Lord says, son, the Lord says, son, son, I've got my hand upon you and I'm going to cause your steps to be enlarged. I'm going to cause you to rise up in a new way. I'm going to cause you to have that, that power, that anointing that you've desired. You've looked upon others and you've desired in your heart. Lord says, son, you're going to find that you're going to be laying your hands on those ones that are distraught, those ones that are sick. You're going to lay your hands on them and you're going to find, wow, they got healed. They got healed. They got healed. And the Lord's encouraging that faith to rise up within you today. There's a faith. There's a faith that's been growing. There's a faith that's inside of you. And you're going to just begin to pray for different ones. And you're just going to know God has heard your cries. God has heard your prayers. It's a new season. It's a new season of enlargement. It's a new season of letting go of the old and embracing the new. I just see that there's a new vision before you. And there's a new chapter that has begun in your life. And God's going to bring enlargement. Hallelujah. In your life. Glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord. I just see, Rudolph, that you're putting this gold trumpet to your mouth and you're blowing it. Blow the trumpet in Zion, Zion. Sound the alarm in thy holy mountain. Hallelujah. And, and your voice is going to be heard. Your voice is going to be heard in Africa. It's going to be heard in the nations. Hallelujah. God is just going to bring such a powerful message out of your mess. 
He's going to bring such a message. It's going to be del deliverance for people. That's going to break witchcraft spirits. That's going to break shackles over people's lives. The people that have been, been bound, oppressed, tormented uh, for many, many decades are going to come out of prison. Hallelujah. I just see when you begin to br bring the word, when you begin to preach, glory to God, there's going to be such an anointing and it's going to be the yoke removing, burden destroying power of God is going to come through your mouth. Hallelujah. God's got something powerful. God is restoring you. He's healing you. And I just see all your family, they're going to rise up out of the ashes of defeat because the resurrection king is resurrecting them. The king is in the house. Yes. I said the king is in the house. Yes. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Charlene, come on. Come on down. Yeah, I just saw foundations that have been broken and um, shattered, but I started to see the Lord starting to rebuild the foundations. But with each new level, there was fire being sealed on each level. Wow, praise God. Man, the fire was burning here last Sunday night. Where are the firebrands? I mean, I said, where are the firebrands? Come on, church. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There is something happening, church. Something is really shaking. The nations are shaking for Jesus. Amen. The devil thinks he won with COVID-19 and all the wars and everything, but Jesus is rising up. He's going to flatten the devil. Amen. And there's going to be such a revival and people drawn to Jesus and their lives are going to be transformed and changed in one moment. It's not going to take hours and days and years like we did. Amen? And decades. Okay, Bill. I just had that word. Uh, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, Amen. says the Lord. And I just saw a chain and just a link broke in the middle and I heard that word legalism. And um, unknowingly, huh. we can always w walk in the law and legalistic. If someone's not doing, you know, we always remember the law, you know, the government or whatever it is. And we unknowingly in our hearts, we become quite stiff and rigid. And that spirit, you know, then unknowingly it's by might or by power. But today it's just that I saw that link break. So I just sat moving and... Um, very moving. good, amen, yeah. Yeah, Bill, where are you going? <laughs> just, a, just about two or three people and Bill... So um, on just Zoom as well. Angelo's friend. I met you this morning. What was your name? Uh, Bryce. Bryce, that's right. Um, I just saw today, I just saw, it's always somewhere in life sometimes, oh, you should have been there, you should have been there. But today there was like an X where you're standing. It was like the, the Lord, you are where you're meant to be today. It was perfect. And, uh, and I just saw like the Lord pulling a cloak off you. So often sometimes we can get covered in something and we can't see or we can't understand, and I just saw the Lord just pulling a dark cloak off, so I saw understanding and things coming to you as well. Amen. Um, so the young lady there, I just, yeah, for you, in worship, I, I just saw your heart just beating, you know, I just saw this beating, and is it your husband in front? Yeah. And I saw his sh shirt, and it says, to live as Christ and to die as gain, and I just saw that for you and just your heart, and my heart thought, She's alive. She's alive. That's what I saw for you. And uh, for, for Eddie, um, there's a scripture. Um, Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered, which is kind of a strange scripture because he's God, but he learned obedience through the things he suffered. And wisdom comes from costly experience. So I see things in life, but wisdom coming to you. God is graining wisdom, and it comes through experiences, and sometimes things we suffer, but this godly wisdom is coming out wow. of for that. So. Uh, you can't beat that one. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Just for Maureen as well. i um, seen this through you for the week. And sometimes in our lives or in our heart, there's always an area of just like a stronghold or something. We just like that. And I saw this rock. And it was like the Lord just hit it and the thing split in half and water came out. So if there's an area, something, it just split apart and water's flowing out. So amen. She knows it. It has happened already. Amen. Something. <laughs> it's something else, is it? I was referring to your children, yeah. Um, just uh, for Lee's daughter too. What was your... Yes, and the what? Myra, that's right. 
Um, I just want to describe something to you, and this, this was from last week, and we know something happened last Sunday night, and I was seeing this picture, and it was kind of funny, I was kind of laughing, and, and it was the Lord Jesus, and he was in this workshop, and the workshop was inside of you, you know, mm. we're like a house to the Lord, and he was in there, and he picked up this atom, and there's like an atom, and he put it on this workbench, and I don't know much about nuclear fusion or whatever. My understanding, if you split an atom, the thing will explode. And, and he grabbed this. Hallelujah. And being a carpenter, he pulled this chisel out and he put this chisel there and he pulled this hammer out. And it was kind of funny and he just hit this thing and this atom just split. And, and in my heart I thought, if a nuclear explosion, you can do it in the back blocks, everyone will know about it. And sure enough, I saw this explosion. And, um, and in your life like that nuclear explosion, but it's of the spirit. Something his life exploded. And then like a nuclear explosion, it just devastates everything around you. And I saw houses and like church buildings, all these things in the natural just being flattened, all the walls. So everything, almost like your old life, has just been obliterated and there's just a life of the spirit. So that's what I saw happen. Amen. Amen, amen. And I, I don't know if I mentioned, you know, I mentioned about like Joseph in the spirit. That's for you as well. Uh, Joseph, God picked the second last son. He doesn't have to be a father or mother. God will work on anyone. See, that rhymes too, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> but God picked you up for your entire household and family. And, and Joseph is, um, like I, I think I said it on Tuesday, it's like Mary. There were so many Marys around and there would have been women who loved the Lord, everyone, but God picked Mary to carry Jesus. And that's what I see. There, uh, God handpicked certain people and God handpicked you last Sunday night. It was a time, but it was your seeking all those many years. You've been seeking God and you ask God, God, fill me, bring me closer. Do what you have to do in my life. And the fire of God just came in and touched your life and he answered your prayers. I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me. It was not just about Joseph, but he bought his entire murderous brothers. You know, if you read it, you will see they tried to kill, kill him. He had the power to, to wipe them right off straight away. He was second in charge of Egypt. You can go and read uh, Joseph's story. Those one on YouTube. Uh, you can go and read the story of Joseph, uh, but I'm just uh, power praising it. Just um, Joseph just kept his heart right with with. And his, his brothers, he could have wiped them right off because they sold him as a slave, wanted to kill him. They had murder in their heart. And, but he kept his heart right with God and God bought. This is for everyone who is willing to pay the price. You know? And I believe that this, this girl, she wanted to pay the price. You know? She was seeking God. I'm not saying that she'll be walking totally in everything. There's going to be challenges in her life. And that's the reason I prayed for her as the fire of God came upon her. And when she laid hands on other people, we need to pray for people like this because God picks, hand picks people. So don't be jealous. Your turn could be tomorrow or the, or day after or whatever it is. But she's been seeking the heart of God and God moved upon her life. And we need to rejoice. The Bible says not to be jealous. Rejoice with those who are rejoicing and mourn with those who are mourning. So you, you got to rejoice, you know. Yes, you have, some of you have been seeking God in some way. But there is a deeper seeking that I, did, I believe Mary had that. And Jesus, God came and hovered over her and Jesus was born. Amen. And God, right through centuries, He loves all of us the same way. He's no respect of person. Whosoever who seeks the Lord will find the Lord. Whosoever is your whosoever, anyone out there who's listening to me who do not know even Christ, you're a whosoever. If you seek the Lord, he, he will come to you because God loves you. He died for you. Jesus paid the price for you and he will redeem you. But there is a seeking that is more deeper than just passing an exam by getting all the dots right. You can get all the degrees if you want and become a pilot or an engineer, but God is looking at your heart. Bill said something very powerful just now. It's, it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Said the, the carnal man, the fleshly man, don't understand the things of the spirit. So I, I've been ministering for over 30 years and I'm ministering in the spirit and they're answering me in the flesh. So it's a, it's a losing battle. But God is winning. Amen. Amen. 
I said, God is winning. He's a winner. He's always been a winner, church. He's going, he's going to move right through COVID-19 and right through the wars. And you watch, church, a billion souls around the world are going to come to Jesus. I, I know that. I can feel it. I can sense it. I can smell it. God is going to move. Incurable diseases are going to be instantly healed. You got something else? Yeah. Uh, just one more quickly. Um, that's a big TV screen down there. Esther? Um, just as I went to sit down, the Lord said, Esther, and I saw a picture for you. Um, you're different. Um, but what I saw this morning, it was like a violin, and the Lord was just playing you, you know, just very differently. So a different tune is going to come out of you, but it will be the same living Christ that's working you as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's, that's fantastic. Amen. Don't be jealous, church. Keep on praying for those who are pushing in. Uh, if, you, if, if you can, can, could you share a little bit of the experience that you had last Sunday night, if you could? Okay, you, you want to come forward? I don't want to put you in the spot, but I, I got this nature of putting people in the spot. <laughs> Um, anyway, so. <laughs> um, last Sunday night, I know you heard it, it was me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but at the, um, I think it was towards the middle of, um, praise and worship, and I saw, um, Beverly being touched by God and I, I turned around to Esther and I said, I wonder if one day I'd get that and if one day I'd feel like that. <laughs> Hallelujah, makes me cry, church. Hallelujah, glory. Come on, Beverly's, we need a lot of them, amen. And then, and then I was like, I just, I wonder if, because I know some people, just, they just experience it differently. And I was just like, I wonder, I wonder when it's going to be my turn. Maybe it's when I'm outside of school and I can focus on him more. But I didn't expect it to be that night. <laughs> and um, Paul and Maureen were going around praying for people. And then they started praying for Esther. And I just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> and then anyway, it just hit me. And then all of a sudden I was, you know, laughing for a while and then I was crying and then all of a sudden I just start screaming. <laughs> uh, and I've never felt like this before. <laughs> and I'm just so thankful for all you guys' prayers for me and all the praise and worship people because I wouldn't be like this without you. <laughs> Hallelujah. How do you feel after that? Uh, you know, like, like the next day and, you know, that night? I'm just a lot happier. Like, I shared this on Zoom as well. Like, the week that just went, it wasn't, it wasn't the best week. I was a bit down. And uh, I've never been so at peace, which is very <laughs> different because I'm... A lot, of, a lot of people tell me I'm a very peaceful person. But I've just never felt so at rest, especially during this time when there's exams and all this stuff. I've never felt happier and so at peace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's the peace of God that passes all understanding. I will give him perfect peace whose mind is set on me. Thank you, Lord. God honors his word, church. Thank you, Lord. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just come here. Thank you, Lord. Just somebody stand at the back of her right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Lord, you protect her. Church, reach out, church. Reach out and, and pray right now. Father God, I come against any negative thoughts, negative words, Lord. Lord, everything that has been spoken over her life, even from the day she was conceived in her mother's womb, right up to this very day, Lord. I smash them and break them today in the name of Jesus. I cut her loose of everything of the past, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your blood, Lord, right now. The blood of Jesus, the royal blood flowing right through her, Lord. She's a daughter of the Most High God, Lord. 
Let your kingdom rule in her heart, in her mind, in her soul, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, that she'll be a weapon, Lord God, not only for cities, but for nations around the world. Nations, nations are in your belly. Maku Sidi, Berabarayanda. You're going to ask, you're going to speak the word, and the word is going to go forth. Because God says his word will not return empty, but it will accomplish. As you speak the word of God, God can trust you. God can trust you. He picked you. He hand-picked you. Right now, Lord God, put your angels around her, Lord. Protect her, Lord. Give her wisdom that the spirit of wisdom will come upon her in a mighty way. Sima tani katoli araba kotri mendo sibiri bele to machine the reko maka niang and marangana. Lord, she will expand and increase in every area of her life right now, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Protect her, preserve her, put a wall of fire. Come on, church, come in agreement. Put a wall of fire around her and the glory within her, the glory within her, the glory within her right now in Jesus' name, right now. This is exactly what happened, church. This is exactly what happened Sunday, Sunday night. The Holy Ghost just come out. God just ignited that flame. He ignited that fire again in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Don't, don't, don't be fearful of what God is going to do. He's in control of the nations. He's the creator of the universe, and He come into partnership with you. You can't get better than that, can you? <laughs> I said you can't get better than that, can you? Partnership with the creator of the universe. Thank you, Lord. There is nothing, no good thing really withhold from those who are walking uprightly. You need to re write that one down and stick it on the fridge. Every one of you, amen. No good thing, amen. You want to stand up, we'll take communion. And I don't know which way God is going to take it. The message went out of the... You can sit down somewhere here, love. If, or you can sit on the floor. You can dance if you want. You can jump if you want. You can, you can do what you want. You, can, you want to sing, you can sing as well, amen. You can do whatever you want. This is church, not as normal. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes we come for a message. The message the message went out of the window Sunday night. Hallelujah. All the programs go out. Just guide her to sit somewhere here if she wants to. Otherwise, you can, when you're ready, love. Yeah. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, as we come, Lord, and hold this bread together. We remember... Just remember that Jesus took all your worries, all your cares, all your sicknesses on his broken body. We do this in remembrance. There is a miracle in this meal. This is the greatest meal that any human being can ever take. Hallelujah. Because there is healing at the, at the table of the Lord. Right now, healing is coming forth. Even before you eat this bread in remembrance, you are worthy. You are worthy. Don't carry any guilt or condemnation. God is lifting it off your life right now. Don't take it in an unworthy manner. You are worthy, not because you polished your life. Write that one down. Not because you polished your life. You are worthy because he loves you and he died for you. That's why you are worthy. So receive it. It's hard to receive. You can't comprehend it, but just receive it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We receive and we believe as we eat together in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. It's your blood that washed our sins away. Nothing else, Lord. Nothing else, Lord. Not because we polished our lives. We believe that you died, you rose again. Right now, as we drink together, we drink to victory, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is doing great things, so start to uh, get, get in there at 6 o'clock in the morning, from 6 to 7.30. We are there from Monday to Friday and six hours. You know, if you want to prophesy and if you want, if you want to share a testimony, if you want to read Psalms 119, not the whole a lot of it, but you can, you can log on to our meetings. We give you opportunities to activate your giftings and callings that God has called you, okay? So we are there for six hours on Saturday. We've been doing that for about... Nine years or something, but our prayer meetings have been there for tw over 25 years. We've been running the church daily prayer meetings, and uh, that's, that's where God is building a foundation in this. A foundation is being built in prayer in this place, and nations are touched. 
one of Yara's messages on YouTube since COVID, you know, God orchestrated the whole lot, the transformation meetings. One of her messages, there is about 3,000 people listening to her messages. Sometimes the prophet is not known in his own hometown, amen. amen. But he's known somewhere in Africa or England or somewhere, they're switching on to Yara's messages. Just one message. So it's going since COVID. Thank God for Norm and Tamaris. You know, they spend a lot of time and those who are helping on the cameras and taking it across the nations around the world. And uh, um, we got a message here, church. Everyone, every church has got a different mantle on their lives, but we got a message here to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free and bring their souls out. I've spent hours and hours with people. Now God is doing it just like that. That girl will never be the same again. She's going to transform places and wherever the soles of her feet go, she's going to carry the Holy One with her. Because your body, are you surprised your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? Amen. We should be the light that will shine. Amen. God handpicked you that His light will shine in you. I'm a poet and didn't know it. <laughs> All right, so try and uh, also the tithes and offerings too, please. Somebody likes to pray for the tithes and offerings. Who want to run up here and pray for the tithes and offerings? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, these guys are excited. They're excited. <laughs> they, 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 didn't take, they didn't take any alcohol, by the way. Huh? This is, they are filled with the Spirit of God. Go and read it in Acts, <laughs> in Acts Church. When they're filled with the Holy Ghost power. Amen? Amen. <laughs> okay, you want to pray now? <laughs> All right, give to the Lord, church. Prepare to give. Amen? Um, who remembers um, Hold the mic Jesus closed. with the lady at the well? Who remembers that? Jesus with the lady at the well. And he said to her that a time is coming, and it is here now, that all, all those who worship God will worship in, what in is it, spirit. Pastor? That's it. Spirit and truth. And who agrees with the pastor when he says that giving is worship? Therefore, when we give, we've got to give with, in the right spirit and in the right truth. Amen. And who remembers that? Free, fruit of the spirit, love, joy and peace. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. So when we give, we've got to give in the spirit of joy. Amen. And God loves a cheerful giver. So as we're giving today, giving, give with joy. And the truth is... My truth changed about six or seven years ago. I finally came and tithed the normal amount before that I wasn't giving a tithe. But that's my truth that now is that tithing is good for me and it's good for you. So, Lord, I just pray as we give today, Lord, that we give in the right spirit and we give in the truth, Lord, that mm. tithing is good for us. Lord, because you want to bless us, Lord. Lord, and I just as we as we come and give today, Lord, that, Lord, and we just, Lord, I just bless your, bless the tithes and offerings, bless them as they're coming in, to the church and they're going out, Lord, mm, Lord, that they bless us as they come back to us, ten, twenty times, Lord, we thank you for your anointing, your fire, your fire on the offering today, Lord, Lord, let it be, let it be, <laughs> let it be a blessing to us. In Jesus' name. Whoa. Amen. Amen. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> you, know, you know what this young lady shared before about what she felt after the Holy Spirit came upon her. On, on Sunday night, she, two things she mentioned is joy and peace. And Jesus bled, he died, he suffered, he rose again to establish the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Who wants that? This is, this is not the peace that the world gives you. 
This space is that no one can take it away. I will give him perfect peace. This is Jesus' word, whose mind is set on me. The peace of God that passes all understanding. So if you are complaining, you are murmuring, and you are meditating on the negative reports or doctor's reports, you can't have this peace. But you need to come to God. Yes, challenges will come, doctor's reports will come, conditions and, you know, x-rays. But the truth is that Jesus took your sickness, your disease, the evil, poverty, lack. He nailed it 2,000 years ago on the cross. And you got to decree and declare that it cannot be in two places at the same time. He nailed poverty. He nailed sickness. He nailed disease. That you will have peace. Righteousness, joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. He wants to impart that. <laughs> Many people know the Lord's Prayer. But, you know, I, I used to say the Lord's Prayer years and years ago when I was a child um, in the denomination that I was in. I used to say the Lord's Prayer uh, thousands of thousands of times, 100 miles an hour. Didn't even understand what the Lord's Prayer meant. Is what I just told you and what happened to this lady just now. What she explained is, you say, God, let your kingdom come into my life. You need to speak it and believe it. Let your kingdom come into my life. Let your will be done. Now, that's a cost. So your kingdom got to go and his kingdom got to, You can't have two kingdoms. And you already have a plan with your will. Say, God, my will goes and thy will be done. And you might not like his will because you will have to give up on watching some programs. <laughs> Glory! Shakarama Sunday! Glory! Shikarama Sundarabatoni Arangai! Hallelujah! Glory, glory, glory! Hallelujah! Someone is getting free right now from sickness, disease, and pain is leaving their body. Could be somebody on Zoom. Somebody you felt something happened, something left your body. Pain left your body. Some, some depression left you. Who is that? Somebody here? Somebody on Zoom? Someone on YouTube? Speak now or forever hold your peace. It's important that you speak, church, if God has touched you this morning. I don't want you to come and tell me a whole story or a whole testimony, just what God touched you this morning. Anyone on Zoom? Don't come later. All right, before Norm comes in, Norm, Norm got something to share as well. Quickly, one, two, three, okay. Ah, yes, I knew somebody had, had it. There's, there's others here too as well. Um, just during praise and worship, I had a vision of waves just coming over, or continually going mm -hmm. waves. And then I saw a vision of um, a lady giving birth to, to a child and uh, it represents um, a new beginnings. and mm. uh, New birth, yeah. Yeah, new Trailing, birth. Trailing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, she gave birth. So mm. something's wow, really birthing something in the happened, spirit, yeah. yeah. Very Thank good, you. amen. That is just confirming what God is doing. In giving birth, is we always talk about giving birth, but you could be giving birth to something, even a financial breakthrough or uh, a family member that you have been praying for many years. They have been birthed into the kingdom of God, amen? Uh, healing that you need for your body. Okay, Norm, are you ready? Ah, you got something, love. Wow. Out of the mouth of babes. Very good. Hold the mic close to you, darling. Okay? I'll, I'll hold it close to you. <laughs> you want to talk? Okay. I'll hold it. Yeah. You speak, love. I'm a good girl. What do you say? Well, you heard something. What was it? Uh, that I heard of the money that... Uh, yes? We share the money and we give some for God and we say some... For God, every day. So, wow! Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a clap. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You got something, though? Yeah. Um. So 
um, when, um, when you, <laughs> when Pastor was praying for you, my heart started like beating deep, and it was like a weird feeling. Oh, yeah. Wow! Praise God! You want that? Do you want it? Yeah. Okay. All right. You want to join a fed? Better still, you you you, you let her you come close to her. You lay hands on, lay hands on her. Just release, release. Somebody else, an uh, adult, people won't take any notice. <laughs> but this is it. These children are just minding their business and God through them. Amen. This is the move of the Holy Ghost. What are you feeling like? I don't know. My heart's beating really fast. My heart's beating very fast. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you bring peace. The peace of God that passes all understanding right now, Lord God. Lord, all the worries, all the cares, Lord, all the stress to be lifted, lifted off her right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for great peace, Lord. Peace to come upon her in a mighty way. I can feel such a strong. Can you feel it? Strong power and the anointing of God around this place. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? You mean you're right, love? Yeah. Okay, Norm, are you ready? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Norm. I'll be right with you. Just quickly, it's good to see Steve Garine in the house today. It's good to see you, Steve. I was sitting, sitting over there and I turned around and I saw you, Steve, and I said to myself, Steve could do with a trim, his haircut. And the Lord, the Lord said he's trimming you by fire. Fire, 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 fire. <laughs> These are not crazy people here, Chad, by the way, amen. There is a new vine that is coming down, church, and you're, you're not in control of it. You know, people like this, they, they cannot. There is no one. Here's another one. They are hungry. What's wrong with you? Come under the... God is raising up a chosen generation and it's the young he's he's raising up the young generation amen 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 the young ones just come forward the young ones just come forward the young ones come forward that's okay the ones in here the ones in here the young ones come forward come forward God is doing this not not a man no, no, that's okay. Just the ones in here. Just the young ones, come forward. Thank you, Lord. That's okay, love. Yeah, come, come. Eli, come. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, let the Holy Ghost power right now. Just relax as much as you can and just look to Jesus. 
Like now, look, God is doing something mighty. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'll tell you what, if Paul was here, he would have been the first one. He's only over 60. That's it. The power of God. That's the power of God, love. That's the power of God. Just, just, just. Are you hungry to receive more? Eh? Are you hungry? Yeah, you are hungry. Yes, 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 yes. Just believe that God can do. Uh, church, can you believe for a miracle? Can you believe for a miracle right now? You are the miracle. Well, just relax, darling, and let just receive. Let the Lord take over. Let Him take over. You don't have to worry about falling. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't worry about falling. Just don't worry about falling. The power of God. Just relax, 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 relax. Come on, church. Keep on praying right now. She needs a miracle right now. We all need miracles. Amen? Right now. Just relax, 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 relax. Relax. That's okay. Don't, don't look around. Just look at Jesus right now. Touch her right now. Holy Ghost fire. Right now. Thank you, Lord. You don't want to fall, Eli? Huh? Thank you, Lord Jesus, right now. Father, touch him right now. Touch him right now. A generation, a generation serving you, Lord God. Serving you. Receive, receive, receive. Relax and receive. That's Jesus touching you, Eli. Thank you, Lord God. Touch them right now. Come on, church. Pray for the young ones. Touch her right now. Makusuma. Takina, touch Mamtu in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name right now. Thank you, Lord. Pope, you just, you just relax, Pope. God wants to fill you. He wants to fill you. He's no respect of person right now. Thank you, Lord. As you relax, just see Jesus standing here. No one else. Suma, Takina. There's a fire of God going right to you. Say, Lord, I believe and I receive. I believe and I receive. I believe and I receive in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. Touch her right now. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power and fire right now. Fill her. Fill her right now, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, give her more, Lord God. Touch her today. Reach out, church. Reach out right now. Seborana here, there. There is a generation that is going to serve the Lord wholeheartedly wholeheartedly right now. Thank you, Lord, for that miracle worker. The miracle worker. Thank you, Lord. Just believe that God has touched you in a mighty way. Just say, Lord, I believe and I receive. Everyone out there on Zoom, on YouTube, say, Lord, I believe and I receive in Jesus' name. That's dunamis, church. That's dunamis power. I said, that's dunamis power, church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, fill her. Give her more, Lord. Give her more, Lord. More, more, more. More of your fire. More of your power. More, 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 more of your power and fire. Fire, 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 fire. Take it right now in Jesus' name. Give him more. Lord, bring peace in his heart and mind right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. All right, all right, Norm, you want to come? Revival, in revival, I've watched the children and the young people lead. I've watched little kids, four or five years old, lay hands and seeing miracles and healings break forth, up preaching, worshipping like crazy. They need to be leading, so expect it. And to me, that's legitimately what is going on. <laughs> I'm going to be really brief, but this is pattern. This is pattern at work. We started Rosh Hashanah, which is we returned to the Lord our God. We went through Yom Kippur, which restored our innocence. And then last Sunday night, we started uh, Sukkot, which is Feast of Tabernacles. And prophetically... What happened is uh, Maureen didn't know, and she not likes to say this, the walls are coming down, the walls are coming down. But prophetically... <laughs> she, she was a week, a week early, but Sukkot is a seven-day festival. 
and it's a festival of joy where we're commanded to be joyful. And why, we, why we're commanded to be joyful is because this festival is where God comes down and takes up residence in His house. And you are His house. This church is His house. So you have been prepared. And today is actually a really special day. On the seventh day of Sukkot, it's called... I forgot what it's called. <laughs> I... <laughs> Slides up there. Yeah. So it's called Hosanna Rabbah, which is the great save us. So today is called the great save us. So if we put, there's meant to be a picture, you can see it there, but it's, it's a picture of a dwelling place. So in Israel and Jews, what they do is they build a sakut, which is a, so output. Um, right, and then it would be uh, keynote. We build it. Yay, there you go. <laughs> now this is, a, this is a prophetic picture. It actually reminds, it's meant to remind us of the clouds of glory that it's like they built a Sukkot, but God built a Sukkot, a dwelling place over the people. And this actually is a picture of on four, all six directions, the cloud of glory protected them from their enemies. The cloud above shaded them from the blazing sun and the one below smoothed the ground and kept the snakes and scorpions away. Amen. This is the gift of God, what God is giving to us right now so that the rest of the year, what we do is we're surrounded by His presence. And you need to walk by faith from this moment forth that what pattern we've just gone through, that His clouds of glory are going to be above you and all sides and beneath you, that wherever you go, His protection and His provision is with you. And this is what this is about. <laughs> so this is, to f this is to fulfill what the entire purpose of creation and what everything is about. And that is to make a dwelling place for God. So this is why every year they're commanded to make a dwelling place. And we've been making a dwelling place by saying, I return to the Lord my God. And through, <laughs> through Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, He's made us innocent again. So if your stinking flesh is taking you back and saying this and that, it's, it's no longer has any relevance. Sukkot is meant to be a foretaste of the coming kingdom to come. But, oh, let, let, let me say, this is Sukkot. Um, so I mentioned about the walls coming down. It is prophetic of today. So <laughs> the rebuilding of the Sukkot of David represents a restoration of the divinic monarchy and the kingdom of God. It's a day when the Jews and Gentiles will be included in their kingdom. I'm just going through it. Zechariah 14, read it another time. But it's also called in Exodus 23, the Feast of Ingathering. This is what revival is about, ingathering. There is a harvest out there and He's preparing you and me to bring it in. Hosanna Rabbah is the seventh day today. The great save us. In the morning service, in a synagogue, they have a bima, which is the podium, and it's circled seven times. And it's completed with sofa blows. This is in remembrance of the fall of Jericho. The Midrash states that the walls of Jericho did not just collapse, but they literally went into the ground. And this is what today is about, that the walls come down. In the Gospel of John, this is, um, I'll show you, this is what Jesus said about this day. This is John 7, 37, 38. I'm going quick because. <laughs> now on the last day, which is Hosanna Rabbah, today, the great day of the feast, which is Sukkot, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. So I'm saying I don't, 
it, it's, you, you, we don't go by feelings. We go by faith that God is wanting to open you all up so that the river of life, living water will come out of you. Now, Jesus said this about this feast. Now, this is in reference to Ezekiel 47. And again, I'm going to be real quick. But this is how the river flows. It started off as ankle deep and then it went through as knee deep and then it went waist deep and then it went so it's a river that could not be passed through. So we're experiencing ankle deep now and it's moving up to knee deep. So we need to, <laughs> we need to keep pushing. Let's push the volume up a bit. We need to... I'm just saying as a church, I'm, I'm serious, we've got to forget everything else. We've got to get rid of any jealousy, bitter, and forget all the flesh stuff. We need to push in now because there's a river flowing. It started. Tonight we're pushing in. We're going to go waist deep and maybe we'll get to river deep. So <laughs> now I just want to show you what happens. So this is Jesus. He said about this day, He wants out of your belly to flow this river. You're meant to be this tabernacle. It says, where, it says wherever this river goes, every living creature that swarms will live. And, where, and there will be many fish. For this water goes there, their waters, that the waters of the sea may become fresh. So everywhere the river goes, I'll just jump through. But it's saying wherever you're, the river coming out of you, it'll be food. The leaves will not wither, as in your fruit will not fail. You will bear fresh fruit in every month, not just once. Because the water that flows from the sanctuary, their food will be food and their leaves for healing. So this is a prophetic. What Jesus is saying He wanted to make you into is this, you're meant to be the living tabernacle. And this is what today is about, that out of your belly will flow this life-giving, healing life, r river. Now, just hide that one. Um, oh, don't worry about it. I, I just jumped, this is out of John 4.10. And this is again, you mentioned about this lady at the, the, the uh, well. The master, master answered, if she knew whom she was speaking, she would have asked him for water and he would have given her living water. Living water for, refers to natural flowing water, drawn water, cistern water. Uh, I'll jump through. Living water flows from springs, rivers and runs in rivers. The Torah requires living water for ritual purification. So wherever we go, we're going to bring purification. And it's also for immersion, which is salvation. Um, it's spiritual cleansing. Okay. So he spoke of the spirit to whom he, who believed in him, were to receive. The rabbis use water metaphorically to refer to the Torah, the teaching of the word, and Yeshua referred to both teaching and spiritual regeneration. Um, so it's like, yeah. That's all I was going to say on that, but, <laughs> but that's just... <laughs> What do I do? Do you want to? Okay, sorry. So in in Israel, uh, this this they would have done the they call it the water libation service. It's where they pour out wine and water in the temple to, as a sacrifice to God. And we know the wine is like what we do with communion, is to representing the blood. But the water is actually to do with water again in relation to what's happening today. So that, and this is prophetically what happens in Israel. It's like they're going into a season, it's the rains come. So it's like what we're doing today is going to allow the rains to come into our fields, which is our work and things like that. So what the priests would do is they would do this and then they'd offer the blessing. Now, I, I keep saying this because I, I had my agenda and... I've been hearing so strongly, it's like the wells have been blocked up in our lives for too long. It's like now is prophetically the time 
when we need to get unplugged and that river needs to flow out of us. Now, I'm go I was going to show a video and maybe we'll do it another day. I'm just thinking about the time. But I was going to show, like I was in the Brownsville Revival under Pastor John Kilpatrick. And he learned a principle about blessing that was really, really important. And I feel as a church, we need to learn how to function in the blessing. Amen. And the biggest thing is that we seem to be clogging up our wells because of the things we say to each other and over each other. He actually learned how to raise up his hands and is actually a three-step process he forgave first thing is like forgive me for for speaking against things so we curse things when we say oh i'm fed up with that or this won't work or you know this ain't right we're speaking negatively about things or we come to church and we curse church it's like oh church again or i didn't like that or, i don't like that and we need to really repent for the things that we say and he had it where even over his children, things like that. He's like, he correct them, but he was correcting out of a wrong attitude and saying things about, yeah, with his wife. And he learned that he could go back. He said, forgive me, but go back and re-speak what he should have spoken in the first place over things. And then he would break the power of the words that he said. And this is how he functioned in a blessing. But what he did, like... Uh, Everything from, he'd like look at this section of, of pews and he would actually speak over them. He says, uh, I bless these pews and the people that are going to come in from outside are going to sit in here and they're going to get saved. People that are walking in here are going to sit in these chairs and these kind of people are going to receive miracles. They're going to receive, the blind eyes will open, the deaf will hear. And they start prophesying and speaking over things or places or people. It's like I can speak over here and this is like I bless Janet right now that she has a sound mind, that she, her youth is renewed like an eagle and you can start prophesying and speaking over things. And what I'm saying is that I really believe prophetically that God wants us to get in line with this river that he is flowing, which means we need to change what we say and how we see things. We need to say, I'm not functioning how I did yesterday or the rest of this year. I'm going to function differently from this moment forward because I'm coming into partnership with the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God wants to move mightily and powerfully in this nation, which now means that we need to start speaking over our church and prophesying to it and start looking at each of these chairs. So somebody's going to sit there and they're going to receive um, a, a missing organ or something that's going to come back. People are going to sit here and they're going to get saved this coming week. We're going to have people lining up. And this is what they, that he, Pastor Kilpatrick learned to do. He started prophesying over the worship team. It's like we prophesy over the front right now. We're going to have this place filled with musicians that the sounds that are going to come out of here are going to lead many people to the Lord. It's going to usher in the kingdom. So you see what I'm, see what I'm saying? is like, and you need to prophesy over your businesses. You need to prophesy over your, your jobs that this year we're going to have increase. While the people are not yes. seeing increase, we're going to see increase. Mm. <laughs> we're going to prophesy over our bodies. We're going to say, it's like, this is like I don't know, like the way I look. I don't like, or oh, this is too big, or this isn't right. No, we're going to change how we speak over our oh, bodies. Oh, oh, this pain is killing me or something. Yeah. These, uh, I'm tired all the time of standing up and my feet hurt and this, and then your feet hurt more and then this, and it just gets worse. And you're going to start saying, you're going to start speaking differently about your wife, your husband. Amen. You're going to speak over your children. I've shown you how, I've shown you on the Yom Kippur about laying hands on your children and prophesying over them. That is so powerful. I mean, the Jewish people are big on blessings. They, they actually talk about giving a hundred blessings a day <laughs> and no plague would come near them. And that's what we need to do. I think that's, yeah. does it, does it, that's I know that's short, but man. seriously, stir yourselves up. Stir up for more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 
Amen. Just, uh, you need to repent, church, because we have all spoken. You know, when you're angry and hurt uh, about your business or things not working out uh, in your family, your wife, you're cursing yourself, you're cursing your family, you're cursing your job, uh, and the world is used to do it, and we were part of the world, and then we continue on. Because death and life, the Bible says, is in the power of the tongue. The tongue is a vicious evil. James talks about it. But blessings and cursings is what Norm was talking about. Blessings and cursings is in the power of the tongue. You can bless one day, then curse the next day, you lost your blessing. So it's a continuous thing, but you need to repent and turn around in the way where you think. So you, you curse your families, curse your children if they're uh, just a negative thought because they're not getting their act right. That negative thought about a curse, and then you pray a beautiful prayer and a million Christians clap their hands, but you've already cursed them. So you need to renounce those curses and uh, why they are taking long, you know, the reason they are taking long to come to your, your reasoning, uh, your blessing out. So it's breaking those curses. And today we'll, we'll open the altar call and we'll lay hands on you to break off any curse that you have spoken over your life or you have spoken to your husband, your wife, because you have brought a curse over that, over that household, over that. You know, when you're angry, I, I've said this many a times, when you're angry, you don't buy chocolates and roses and go and give your husband or wife. Okay, so you might not even say the right words, but you've already cursed them really well, right? And then you pray the nice prayers and say, God, I forgive you. No, you need to break the curse first, church. You need to break the curse. You need to repent of the foul way of thinking. And then you can prophesy to the nations out there because they are waiting. The earth is crying out for the, for the manifestation of the sons of God that the manifestation of God's power will flow into you and through you. And as Norm said, creative miracles will happen as you pray over people because the river is starting to flow out of your life. There's a river of life flowing out through me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, set the captives free. There's a river of life flowing out through me and you too. Amen. Hallelujah. So you want to come forward and Yara and I and Norm will just pray for these people. Just... You don't have to have a long prayer. And if somebody prayed for you, don't go back and join another line, okay? You just got to believe by faith. If nothing happened to you like this girl, okay? If nothing happened to you like her, believe that something happened. Go home in the middle of the night. The joy of the Lord is going to come into your life. Okay, by faith you believe that God has touched you. Not Norm, not Yara, not me. That the Lord has touched you. And your life will never be the same again. You need to repent if you are spoken against your husband, your wife, your child, uh, your next door neighbor, the media, White House, Black House, whatever house it is, Parliament House. You need to confess those because those curses are going to come. Death and life, whatever a man sow, he will reap. It will come back to you, church. But today you're going to break if you repent. I can't force you to repent. You don't have to say, God, I'm sorry.